And now, the uses of Sage Tea. First thing you need to know about this list is that many of the things that are on it have been around for a long time. And there are still huge gaps, unfortunately, in much of the research that needs to be done on them. But I'm going to provide you with real evidence from actual studies whenever possible. With a few exceptions, the benefits of drinking sage tea are the same as using sage oil or just plain eating sage leaves. So this video really is all about how consuming sage is either good or bad for you. Now sage is chock full of lots of great vitamins and minerals, and it's most noted for its high concentration of vitamin K and iron. But I'm including a graph to show you the complete breakdown of its nutrients, just in case you want to pause the video and have a good look. In addition to these, sage actually contains lots of other beneficial goodies like salvinogen, flavonoids, tannic acid, and more. Now when people started using sage about 4,000 years ago for medical purposes, they already knew one of the primary benefits was how it could improve your brain. More recently there have been some studies that have shown that it can improve memory and is now believed that it could possibly help with Alzheimer's disease. Researchers in Iran have shown that extracts of Salvia officinalis and Salvia lavandulaefolia improve cognitive function in patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer's. Now, vitamin K has also been shown to help prevent the oxidization of brain cells and encourage brain activity. Now, there's one study that specifically shows that sage oil helps in other ways too, but that's sage oil, we're talking about sage tea. And this is why sage was called the thinker's tea. This is mainly the result of the compound thujone, which helps with GABA and serotonin receptors. Unfortunately, there are a few negative side effects to thujone, which we will talk about in a little bit. Now, there are further studies that show that sage can help with focus, attention span, and mental acuity. There are also some hypotheses that say sage helps with depression and grief, but unfortunately, there is not much research to say how long or how much it helps with this. Researchers at the University of Vienna, Austria concluded that sage does in fact have solid anti-inflammatory properties. Specifically, it is very good for mouth and throat sores. A study in complementary therapies in medicine in 2016 showed that gargling with a cold sage tea can help inflammations of the mouth and throat. A study in the Journal of Biochemical Pharmacology in 2009 backed this up as well. Other uses in this area include using it as a mouthwash to improve oral hygiene and for treatment of sore throats, canker sores, gum disease, and throat infections. Now the possible antioxidant benefits of sage are enormous. Now sage contains over 160 distinct polyphenols which work as antioxidants in your body. And there are some studies that show that sage can possibly help with dyspepsia and indigestion. There are also claims that sage helps with facial wrinkles. Unfortunately, there isn't much research to back this up. Sorry. Now, one of the coolest things that's been shown about sage is how it can help menopause symptoms. A 1998 trial and a 2011 study both found that half of the participants saw their hot flashes decrease after four weeks. And by the eight week mark, two thirds saw the same results. Other research has shown that by itself or with an alfalfa extract, sage can help with night sweats and excessive sweating. One German study indicated that it could reduce sweating by as much as 50%. Sage is also believed to be a good deodorizer and can help eliminate body odor. Here's where we start getting into the areas that have a lot less research behind them and are more based just on people's personal success. Some people say that steeping sage tea for 30 minutes and then dabbing it on your face after it's cooled can help with oily skin problems. Its antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties are believed to help with acne, eczema, psoriasis, and other skin infections. It may also be utilized as a lotion for ulcers and to heal raw abrasions of the skin. Now when it comes to hair, things are again pretty murky, and the little research that does exist says that it's more likely attributed to sage oil than tea, but here we go. Sage has been used since ancient times to help combat hair loss, and this is now believed to be because of beta cystosterol, which has been found to be effective against male pattern baldness. Want fabulously lustrous and shiny hair? Then add a little sage tea when rinsing it off to make it extra shiny and possibly even ward off dandruff. The benefits are said to be even stronger when coupled with rosemary and could possibly even make your hair a little bit thicker. 
dealing with a little bit of gray hair? Well, no problem. Sage can help you out there too. Used in tandem with either rosemary or black tea, it is supposed to help bring back those darker colors. Again, there's no research, but if you want to try it out and report back to me, hey, let's find out how it goes. Sorry my blonde and redheaded friends, but this is only good for people with dark hair. And that's because there are tannins involved in the tea. And uh, also, it's tea. So, you know, if you're not careful with it, it's going to stain your towels and your clothes. So, be careful. Some limited research actually shows that taking sage three times a day for two months can increase good cholesterol levels and decrease bad cholesterol levels. It can also help with blood flow by limiting atherosclerotic plaques. Try saying that ten times fast. Because of its high iron content and certain flavones, sage tea can supposedly help with anemia, fatigue, and even muscular weakness. Early research also indicates that sage might be able to lower blood glucose levels by blocking the release of stored glucose in the liver, thereby helping people with type 2 diabetes. Impressive, but again, it's just limited research. Now there is a laundry list of other possible things that sage could be good for, but you know, there's limited to no research to back it up. So hey, why not? Let's cover a few of the cool highlights. Sage tea's antispasmodic properties supposedly can be used as a steam inhalation to prevent asthma attacks. It could also be effective in keeping mucus congestion down and preventing secondary infections. Because of its high vitamin K content, it is believed sage can help strengthen bones better than milk because it reduces excretion of calcium and acts as a modifier of bone matrix proteins. Want better sleep? Sage has got you covered there too. The magnesium content is supposed to help with insomnia and to help improve the tranquility and quality of your sleep. Oh. Painful joints and palsy got you down? Sage tea! Delirium and nervous anxiety causing you problems? Sage it! How about liver problems, kidney problems, or hemorrhaging in the liver or stomach? Sage tea for that too! Warts? Sage tea! Come on, seasickness? I sage tea, matey. Biliousness, typhoid fever, measles, sage, sage, and more sage tea. What about per sage tea? It's even supposed to have limited antifungal, anti-allergy, and antibacterial properties. Now finally we come to the possible negative side effects of sage and sage tea. First up is that sage tea can have an estrogenic effect and is believed to possibly dry up breast milk. So it is suggested that pregnant women stay away from or limit their use of sage tea or possibly offset it by eating lots of basil. You can watch my other videos to find out why. Any other side effects attributed to sage have to do with thujom. Ooh, you nasty thujom! How dare you mess things up for our beloved sage? Well, actually, it's not as bad as you think. While common sage does in fact contain thujom, which can be toxic, luckily it does not contain high amounts of it. And that is why the Food and Drug Administration has included common Greek and Spanish sage on the generally recognized as safe list. Luckily, we also have a study published in the July 2011 edition of Chemistry Central Journal that says three to six cups of sage tea could be consumed without reaching the toxicological limits. And we're talking the standard one cup size, not the uh, mega teacup size. Now luckily, it's also been shown that when you harvest sage in spring, it actually has lower levels of thujone than when you harvest it in the fall. If you do happen to have a sensitivity to thujone, you can consider a varietal of sage that has much less thujone in it, like Salvia lavendulae folia. Overall, it's best just to mix sage tea into the mix with other teas if you're the kind of person who likes to have three to six cups or more of tea per day. Well, I mean, as there are so many other great herbs out there that you can benefit from, why would you just have sage tea? Well, besides the fact that it's awesome, hmm, that's a good argument. Thanks so much for watching. Now is that happy time to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. If you want to find out more about the uses of sage and sage tea, you can look at all the links in the description down below. My question for today is, do you already drink sage tea? If not, hey, you gonna start now? Until next time, be kind to each other and drink more sage tea.